Welcome back to Morning Rush. It's a story that everyone is talking about. Longtime vaccine critic Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is canceling $500 million in vaccine funding. This includes 22 different projects, some of which fight respiratory viruses like COVID-19 and the flu. Joining us now live is Dr. Richard Besser, former acting CDC director and current president and CEO of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Thank you so much for being here again on Scripps News. Good to see you, Holly. So Secretary Kennedy is criticizing the mRNA development of vaccines, and he says he's going to revert to something safer. First of all, can you explain how mRNA technology works for those who are not familiar with it, and how is it different than traditional vaccine delivery? Yeah, you know, mRNA technology is, is pretty miraculous. It was developed over the past 20 years or so by funding, government funding from the National Institutes of Health. And what it does is, it, it, it M, mRNA stands for messenger RNA. When you inject a vaccine that is mRNA into a, a person's muscle, um, your own body starts to make small amounts, little pieces of protein uh, that, that relate to the infection you're trying to prevent. Those little pieces of protein cause your immune system to create factors called antibodies or protective factors that then fight that infection. Um, the, the beauty of this is that you can make a new vaccine against a new infectious agent incredibly quickly. During the first Trump administration with Operation Warp Speed, uh, for the first time in our history, in, in about a year's time, we had new vaccines against an infection that we had never seen before. And it saved millions of lives. Um, I ran emergency preparedness and response at the CDC for, for four years during the, the Bush administration. Uh, and I can tell you that during a public health crisis, time is, is of the utmost urgency. And so anything you can do to shave off the time it takes to make a new vaccine uh, is, 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 is worth it. Older technologies take a lot longer to, to develop. They don't use this incredibly efficient approach of mRNA, uh, and it can be years. So the idea that the secretary is taking away a tool that is almost miraculous is unfathomable. I have absolutely no idea um, why he would, would take this kind of step for technology that was shown during COVID to be effective and incredibly safe. So, and, and we know that mRNA is being used for more than just vaccines. It's also being used in areas of disease prevention, cancer research. So now if people think this technology is not safe because of what he's inferring, what are the long-term risks? Well, you know, we have a, a Secretary of Health who doesn't seem to want to wanna go with evidence or the advice of scientific uh, experts. And so I don't know what direction it's gonna go. Uh, I'm very concerned about the deep cuts that we're seeing at the National Institutes of Health. The National Institutes of Health funds the research across the country at universities uh, that's focused on understanding diseases, treating diseases, disease prevention, um, to take off the table a technology that is, is really revolutionary will put our country behind other countries and will mean that we will have to wait longer uh, for the kind of treatments that we need in the midst of a crisis. Okay, so then given that the mRNA technology basically cuts vaccine production time in half, having been through the pandemic, and the bird flu threat still out there, now is there a concern in the scientific community that we just may not be prepared for another pandemic, let alone come up with a solution more slowly? That, that is a big concern. The traditional way of making flu vaccine is growing up amounts of, the, uh, of an altered virus in eggs. Uh, it works and it takes a really long time. I, I ran the CDC at the beginning of the, the H1N1 uh, swine flu pandemic back in 2009. Uh, and it took a lot longer to make a new vaccine than we, we would uh, see if, if the mRNA technology were, were going forward. The idea that the government was funding so many studies in this area uh, is evidence of, of the fact that the, the feeling was if you can get these things in place now and have basically uh, uh, production in, the, in a warm phase, if you have to ramp it up quickly, you're going to be able to do so. By taking this away, it endangers the lives of everyone here, not just here, 
The U.S. Has, has done a lot to supply vaccines around the world, and so many people will suffer because of this decision. And, and, and Secretary Kennedy, his explanation is that he says he wants to invest in, in his words, better solutions. But are there better solutions out there? Well, you know, this solution was such an advancement over the old technology, both in terms of effectiveness, also in terms of side effect profile. Uh, I'm not sure what he's, he's, he's getting at there. He is someone who has demonstrated uh, uh, time and time again that he does not believe that vaccines um, are the way to go for a lot of diseases. Um, the, the medical community, the public health community, and the American people would disagree with him on that front, but he is in a position with incredible power uh, to to really rattle people's faith in something that was always viewed as one of the greatest advancements in public health and, and, and medical uh, uh, technology, and that's vaccines. And Secretary Kennedy, he also said, quote, um, a universal vaccine that mimics natural immunity. That's the administration's focus. What could that possibly mean? Well, you know, the, the, there is, has been a, an elusive goal to develop a flu vaccine that works against every strain of flu and that gives you lifelong protection. You know, that's what we see with things like uh, like measles. You get two shots when you're young and that should protect you for your, for your life. That's not the case with flu. We see, you know, that's why every year there's a recommendation that you get a flu shot. But there have been researchers who've been working on this for decades and decades to try and come up with a, a one-shot flu vaccine that will protect you forever. That should still be the goal, but you don't want to take away something that is working right now, that is quick, that is effective, that is the potential to, to leave us much more better, much better protected against a wide range of infections, and that's the mRNA uh, technology. And so definitively for our audience, for those who still may not be sure, have heard some conflicting evidence, are vaccines safe and should you be vaccinated? You know, Holly, I, I practiced pediatrics for more than 30 years, and I can tell you that there's nothing I did as a pediatrician with more proven value than, than making sure that my patients were vaccinated fully and on time. Um, and what I would say to, to, to viewers is talk to your doctor, talk to your child's nurse, your pharmacist, someone you trust and ask your questions so that they can be answered and you can make the best decision for your family. Because I think when you do that, you will hear that vaccines are the right way to go to ensure that your child and that you as an adult are protected from diseases that can cause great harm. Dr. Richard Besser, former CDC director and president of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, thank you as always for your insight and expertise. We look forward to having you here again on Scripps News. Thanks so much, Holly.